First Thessalonians chapter one. We find Paul writing to the church in Thessalonica. It's a powerful book. This letter is one of the greatest teachings on the doctrine of eschatology, the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. It begins, Paul writes, from Timothy and Silas and himself. He lets the people know God loves you. God has chosen you. That's how he begins the letter. The three of them together are serving. They had been ministering all over Greece. They had started up in Philippi, gone through Thessalonica, all the way through Athens and Corinth. And now he's writing back to the early church and he says, I want to remind you just how much God loves you. I want you to know that he's chosen you and you belong to him. In his other writings, he says, you don't belong to yourself. You've been bought with a price, the blood of Jesus, and you belong to the Lord. He begins his letter by letting us know that we belong to God, that God loves us, and we are his chosen people. One of the great teachings here in the end of the book is how to live. Paul writes that if we're gonna live and have lives that are fulfilled with purpose, there are three things that we will do. We'll be joyful, we will pray, and we will be thankful. My grandmother used to drink coffee and I asked her as a little boy, I said, Grandma, how can you drink that coffee? Isn't it bitter? And she smiled and said, it sure is bitter. That's the reason why I put sugar and cream in my coffee. I thought about that when I got older, and I thought, you know what? Life can be bitter. Maybe you've had those kinds of experiences. And I've discovered what Paul wrote is so true. It's Bible, it's doctrine, and it has life to it. What kind of sugar and cream do you add to your life when it is bitter? Paul said, you'll do two very specific things. You'll be thankful and you will pray. Isn't that amazing? When we pray and when we are thankful, all of a sudden the bitterness disappears and we become joyful. Let me say that again. Just like sugar and cream in a hot cup of bitter coffee, everything becomes sweet. When we pray, and when we praise God in every circumstance, joy comes to our hearts. Whether we're on top of the world or in the valley, whether Paul is preaching to thousands or he's in a jail in Philippi, he is thankful and he is praying and praising and God blesses him with a joyful heart. Well, he answers the question, what's gonna happen in the future? What about all the dead that have gone to be with the Lord? What's gonna happen to them? And here he says, the dead in Christ will rise again. It's called the blessed hope by the apostle Paul, translated in the King James Version, the blessed hope. He writes about it in detail in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. At the trumpet sound, in the twinkling of an eye, the dead in Christ will rise. And what about all of us? Well, he explains that too. All of those that are still remaining, Paul wrote, they'll be caught up in the air. Translated from the Latin, it's called rapture. I believe in the rapture. I believe in the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. And why do I believe that? Because the Bible teaches it. You'll find it all right here in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Oh, Father, today I accept the challenge. Wherever I'm at, whatever I'm doing, I will give you praise and I will pray. And I know, God, that when I plant the seed of prayer and praise, my heart will always be joyful. Oh, let each one have a day that is filled with joy, I pray. And let each one be thankful every step of the way. And may we pray with out ceasing throughout the entire day. Bless each one, I pray in Jesus' name.
Amen. You remember, God loves you, and so do I.